Hey gang, welcome back. I thought I'd take a quick little look at war stories from Firelock Games. And I wanted to not, uh, not compare and contrast, but I just show uh, by way of comparison some stuff from uh, Twilight 2000 as well. Because they're all built on the years of Zero System. And, I, and it's interesting to me that a core or base system like the Year Zero system can be applied to so many genres so effectively. And while there's probably not a lot of a significant difference between Twilight 2000, sort of from a military standpoint, perhaps, uh, with uh, compared to World War II, right? So, you know, post-apocalyptic World War III versus World War II, very similar, different equipment, Obviously, a different theme and things like that, but uh, <clears throat> I, the the technology really hadn't changed that much, particularly given that Twilight 2000 has kind of gone back into the Dark Ages type of thing. So, in some ways, uh, World War II is a little bit more advanced. But what's more important to me is just the evocative nature of these systems and how much work the folks put into trying to be mostly historically correct, build some great campaigns, build some great characters and uh, skill sets and capabilities and other uh, traits and other bits and pieces so that you really feel like you are playing a completely different game, yet you have the knowledge that you know, okay, to, to be successful on a die roll, I gotta roll a six, and to be successful at this, I've gotta do that, and if I roll a one, that's bad, and something negative is gonna happen, and it all it all feels very comfortable and similar, uh, but then you're playing in a completely, you know, completely different universe. So let's have a quick look because I just got this in the mail. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Firelock had sent, I had approached me quite a while back to look at uh, oak and iron or iron and oak, whatever it's called. I, I can't see it from where I'm sitting right now, but the naval ship game, uh, pretty straightforward, a uh, little system with uh, you know, miniatures and all that sort of stuff. And I did a quick, playthrough of an ambush scenario, you know, pirates attacking a Spanish galleon with an escort and quite enjoyed that and used all the all the rules with it. And they then sent me some extra stuff from super nice. And I, you know, said thanks and yada, yada, yada. Well, then they asked me if I wanted to have a look at war stories. And so they sent me the PDF and I, and I had a read through of it and ran through a couple of little combats. And I think I, I made a post about it. I may have even done a video, I'm not sure. But so I got this in the mail yesterday or a couple of days ago. Uh, so it's a full set of all the kit, including the dice and all that sort of stuff was uh, much, uh, very unexpected. And so uh, now I have my own very, very cool copy of it. And the other thing I want to talk about today uh, while we have a look at this is how can I take this game <clears throat> and take uh, something like, oh, I don't know, uh, last hundred yards or lock and low tactical or you know if you're an ASL player you could take ASL or combat commander or band of brothers or old school tacticals or some uh, uh, squad based system how can I take those some of those scenarios and weave them into gameplay with this because you know I could put uh because this has maps and stuff in it, but it's all square-based maps. Uh, and it's really doesn't seem to be designed to use minis at the moment, but maybe that's coming later. Uh, uh, you know, sort of on the tabletop. I know that's a thing that Dungeons and Dragons players like to do these days. And I kind of say these days, like for the last 20 years, but I haven't played D&D in, shoot, since, oh, a long time ago, <laughs> 1980s. Late seventies, early eighties, I guess. Whenever, whenever D and D came out, that I played, you know, V one, I guess, and we didn't have minis and things. We just had our imaginations and some dice, and we we made maps as we went along to keep track of where the hell we were. Um, but it would be, you know, it would be cool if you had little World War Two soldiers or counters on a map as you played out some of these scenarios. Something to think about. I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about that in a second. So uh, let's do a quick little side by side with war stories in a, in a sec. So, you know, obviously, fantastically, <clears throat> uh, you know, the artwork is uh, 
amazing and it's very well presented, kind of gives you the intro. So it's a Western theater based system. Apparently will be expanded into the Pacific and the Eastern Front and the Med and Africa and other places later. We'll see if that happens, right? I guess it's really going to be uh, subject to uh, the success of the adoption of this system. So uh, it gives you sort of background on what's going on and what happened. And the initial the initial story for this, for the, fra- the I guess the framework for the campaign at least, and what what characters start in the game is all about the 101st Airborne and their landing into you know behind the beaches of Normandy, and then the first campaign book deals exclusively with that, right? From jump to a certain point, which I, I won't reveal at this point. Uh, so you know, so here's the dice. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's the the dice. And you get this set of cards that you can use for, I believe you can use that for initiative is what that might be for, for combat rounds. And then you've got this cool little uh, screen here. Helps you run through different cap- different uh, items for combat and damage and luck. Uh, there's this concept of lucky strikes and foobars, which is what happens when you get... Uh, you know, a one or a six on your on your die rolls that I mentioned earlier on <clears throat> critical hit tables, and just you know side by side. Here's the you now this is probably you know a little bit more of a deluxe uh, treatment, but here's a full sort of board, hardboard mounted. Same concepts here with terrain charts and fast actions and critical hit locations and all that sort of stuff for Twilight Two Thousand. Whoopsie, I guess that only folds up one way. Yep. And uh, Twilight 2000 came in a box. Uh, it's from Free League, a different company altogether. Came in this box. I think I've done a, I've done a session on these before. And you get your, your dice and all that sort of stuff. And they have uh, encounter cards, where it just uses an encounter table that you just roll for. There's initiative cards as well. Uh, and this is the big honking referees manual. Uh, that's all my characters that I've. Uh, rolled up and stuff uh so there's all this in here for these guys you know very nice but it also came with a counter sheet big players manual a strategic map that is really large (laughs) and then uh, i'll show you the counter sheet it also has you know hex based 10 10 meter hex maps that are pretty slick and there are expansions coming, uh, so you can you know constantly be paying, paying them money, counters for the guys, for your chaps and uh, NPCs and you know smoke and I guess it could be chemical attacks or something like that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, and I've posted some pictures about this, and I've actually written up three or four characters that I want to try and run some campaign things on set in Twilight 2000 apocalyptic universe Uh, put all that back right so with this though because there's so many scenarios that lend itself to gameplay in world war ii from my wargaming collection it just got me thinking about how i could potentially pile or you know merge a tactical war game system into into this or take you know, uh, use this for combat resolution if you were playing a miniatures game, like what are, what are the Flames of War or what, one of those type of systems. I wonder if that would be something that would be useful. I like how they've taken historical pictures here and uh, and then cartoonized them to some extent, uh, famous pictures and sort of built them into the into the woven them into the story here so anyway so you can see this is really substantial right Uh, and it's got the all the different weapon classes and capabilities and it just goes on and on it's going to be awesome right i'm 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 pretty i've been thinking i was went to bed last night thinking about this and trying to you know come up in my mind there's some pre-made characters here and even some npcs that you can use here uh as well there's all the charts and appendices in the back here 
and I haven't really gone through all this in detail. I got through like the first 80 pages last night. Uh, intro scenarios. You know, because you don't have to be a parachute guy, right? You don't have to be a paratrooper. You could be a German if you wanted to be. You could be a French partisan. <clears throat> you could be a British pilot trapped in, in the back, uh, back uh, and trying to escape uh, in, in the back country of France or something. Uh, and you could play, what's that, uh, what's that show? Uh, that funny British comedy? I can't remember it now. Uh, where all the British pilots come to be liberated by the... At the at the cafe, with with uh, Pierre and the gang and the and the uh, Madonna with the big boobies, <laughs> is what the the, the the Germans are trying to hide a uh, famous artwork. Anyway, uh, that would be fun to. What is the name of that show? I can't remember it off the top of my head. I was thinking about it last night. So there's a bunch of stuff in here that I'm I'm excited about having a more detailed look at. <clears throat> and you can also imagine that as we as you get into this and they start doing more and more expansions, that that would be a very substantial amount of content that would be released. Now the campaign runs through four or five different scenarios uh, and ends up, I think, I think the battle for Carantan is the last battle. Uh, that's where it ends up. And so you know, there are all these <coughs> missions here. Zoom in just a little bit here. I just be, want to be careful with the camera. Uh, mini missions that come in your sort of side missions here. Then there's player handouts. So there's pre pre genned characters if you want them. There's obviously political tensions between uh, different characters in the in in the base. Uh, NPCs, so the two lieutenants don't like each other, and the captain who's running the company is a bit of a dumbass. Kind of, it kind of feels like it's built off of the Band of Brothers story, pretty much. It's a pretty loose copy of that, I would say. Uh, except that we also have the secondary tension of, <clears throat> uh, you know, there's the Winters character. He's not called Winters in this for all the obvious reasons. Uh, but there's the Winters style character, and then there's another platoon uh, leader, lieutenant, who's you know a little bit more hard charging and just wants to get the job done and get back to the homeland. So that uh, and he doesn't care what how many guys he has to spend to make that happen. Uh, and then of course there's the Winters style character who's looking after the boys, and they're all trying to get rid of the uh, the captain who is a dumbass. Uh, so then we've got so we got this area players map. You've got to go capture the capture the artillery, uh, take out the battery, right on Utah Beach. Then you've got uh, Saint Martin de Vaville, perhaps so another player map here, and you can see these are sort of representative, sort of artistic renderings with the little uh, squares, uh, square overlays on them. Uh, another map here. And so then you'll have another, uh, looks like you'll have another uh, uh, outpost to capture. And it also does a nice job here of taking, you're not just a squad of guys. So there are, uh, there are other squads, there are other platoons, and there are battalions and regiments of activity going on. And the campaign will give you context of what's happening. And perhaps as the GM is rolling dice and he'll be letting you know, well, you know, Platoon X is having issues with uh, their attack, so you've finished your part of the mission there. What do you do? Do you go on to your secondary objective, or do you pause and go help the guys? Uh, that's your choice, right? You know, that may influence act actions later on in, uh, in the campaign, for instance. So you can see all this sort of stuff, right? I'll just flick through this here real quick. And then there's the Countdown player map analysis. And of course, there's your jump, your jump seating chart. <laughs> uh, you've got to do that on the C-47. So, uh, and there's a chronology in here, so you get the uh, get the weather and all sort of business going on. Uh, so, very, very interesting, and, I, and I'd love to perhaps, so, you know, I am obviously most familiar with the battles for, battle for Normandy, uh, Battle for Normandy, uh, the Heroes of Normandy, which has a whole bunch of scenarios in it. I'm wondering if I could find some 
D-Day landing day scenarios. And I know there's also set later in the game around Bastogne, there's the we we are we were alone or we are alone expansion. It's the 101st Airborne doing its landings, uh, doing its uh, being besieged in Bastogne. So there's that as well uh, that we could potentially use as scenarios. So my request to you now, I should have asked this at the beginning instead of making you watch 15 minutes, but hopefully you'll still be listening. I will uh, be would love to hear from you in terms of ideas because I'm not really an RPG guy uh, so much, uh, though I have played a lot in the past, but, uh, and I'm also never really been a, a GM or a good GM, let's just put it that way. I ran a Call of Cthulhu uh, session a couple of times, and uh, that's about it. So I'd be curious, well, you know, the other game we could look at too is Combat would be a great game from Compass Games. Combat would be another great game to look at because that's man on man. Right, that's man-to-man combat. So there's another title that we could sort of dovetail some action into, even though it has its own kind of sort of uh, RPG system in it. Now, uh, so my question is, what would you do? How would you approach it? What do you think would be interesting? I'll be playing these things. Some of the time I'll be doing it solo. Some of the time I will perhaps do some of this live once I get this the system and down. Uh, more tightly, right? And so if I'm going to do it live, I'm going to want to have units on a map, move guys around. The challenge would be is that I'm obviously GMing and playing for the characters. So the that sort of brings to mind, well, would it be interesting or worthwhile to take the folks that have already signed up for combat uh, to be a character in that in fact, I guess anybody could. We could run it live and you could all grab a guy or vote on actions and then we could play live and I'll just live stream and we'll play and we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know if there's a digital representation of this yet and, you know, sort of like a vassal module or I, I believe like the Twilight 2000 guys have got a app that, uh, a web app, I think that you can use that have got all the maps and counters and all the charts and, and all that sort of nonsense all built in. I need to go download all that. I haven't really looked at it. It's been out for a long time. I'm wondering if these guys will do the same. But nevertheless, with combat or lock and low tactical or old school tactical, I'm curious about tying these things together to give a sort of visual representation uh, and then play and have you guys kind of help out and participate and make the suggestions. And so it's not just me playing solo. Uh, or or uh, should I just play solo and write it up as a story and then post it on my sub stack and you can read a narrative exploration of things versus uh, a gameplay. So curious about what would be interesting to you and then I'll assess how interesting that is to me and whether that's something that's doable with the tools and equipment and space that I have. And then let's, uh, let's sort of go for it from there. Uh, Love to hear your feedback. Ciao.